Okay, so you should have completed all the math for problems 5, 6, and 7. And now we're going to do the ray diagrams for those problems. But of course, before we do anything, remember, we're going to make our predictions. So the math shouldn't have been difficult at all. So for number 5 here, we got our converging lens, SO, larger than twice F. How do we know it's a converging lens? Well, it's convex in shape, meaning it's thicker in the middle than it is on the edges. So the mass should have been pretty simple. SI should have been positive 5.00 centimeters, and the magnification should have been negative 0.667. Remember, even though neither of these is a vector quantity, you do want to put signs on it, even if it's positive, because you're then going to line everything up with your sign conventions. And so if you haven't already, pause the video and make your predictions as to what the math is telling you, one word from each category, as to what the image should look like. Okay, so hopefully first you notice that SI is a positive amount, and a positive amount goes along with an inverted image. You look at your magnification, and disregarding the sign, the absolute value of the magnification is less than 1, so we're definitely looking at a reduced image. And then either one of these, either sign convention, should tell you that we're looking at a real image, whether you're looking at the positive SI or the negative magnification. So we're looking for an inverted, reduced, real image. As often happens, our ray diagram isn't really labeled up, so let's go ahead and label our arrow as the object, always, always. And then we're going to label F on both sides, and then we can also label 2F and 3F over here, at 2F over there as well. As you saw from the previous video, we want to put a reference line right down the center of the lens. Sometimes the ray diagram will already have it there for you, but even if it's not drawn for, your, for you, you draw it yourself, because we want to do that, because remember, all of our light rays, we're going to pretend are refracting halfway through the lens. And as I talked about before, you want to extend the dashed line above the lens and below the lens just in case you need extra space. So, at this point, pause the video and start doing your rays. Remember, you only need two rays to intersect. And you've located the image, but this being one of the first times you're doing it, maybe you want to go in order, maybe do all three of the principal rays, whatever makes most sense to you. So here's my parallel ray. Remember, we always start from the tip of the object, going from the tip of the object halfway through the lens. We're going to stop there at that midline that you drew. And then what happens to the parallel? It, of course, refracts through the focal point. You don't know exactly how long of a ray you're going to need, so make it nice and long. And as always, make sure you're putting arrows on your incident ray and your refracted ray. If you want to do the central ray, this is a real easy one. All you have to do is aim for the center of the lens. Now, you have to hit the exact center of the lens. Luckily, that's already marked for you. It's where the principal axis and your dashed line intersect. So make sure you're not hitting the left side of the lens or the right side of the lens. Make sure you really are hitting the center of the lens. And we like this one so much because we know the central ray just goes straight through. And again, just extend it until it intersects the first one. At this point, you can be done. As long as they've intersected, you've already figured out where the image is going to be. But you know what? Let's practice doing the focal ray. Now, for the focal ray, we're going to use the focal point on the same side for this converging lens. So you go from the tip of the object right through the focal point, which again is labeled right there on your principal axis. You stop at that dashed line, and then it comes out on the other side parallel to the principal axis. And if you've done everything very well, all three intersect at the same location like mine does. Now, the ray diagram is not complete until you've drawn the image, which, remember, is always drawn from the principal axis to the intersection point. And so here's what the image looks like. It's a good idea to label the image so it's very clear where the object is, where the image is. So let's look at our predictions. We predicted inverted. Has it been inverted? Of course. It's pointing up. That's pointing down. Has it been reduced? Yeah. If you can't tell, you could always measure, but you should be able to see that this image is smaller than the object. What about being real? Well, we go back to our definitions, and one of the definitions is if you could put a screen there, could you get an image onto the screen? So imagine this is a source of light, and the rays of light are going through the lens, and if you put a screen over here, would these rays of light actually converge onto the screen? Yes, they would. That's how we know there's a real image. What about the numbers? Well, the focal length of this lens is 3 centimeters. So if this is 3, this is 6, we predicted 5. Does that look like it's about 5? It kind of does. Does this image look like it's about 2 thirds the size of the object? Well, if you measure, you should actually be able to see it's actually an actually a ratio of 2 thirds. And so, as always, the math predicts what should happen. The ray diagram confirms it. And this is why, no matter what the problem says, no matter what the problem says, you will always do the math first because it's almost always that you're going to get the math correct. And then if your ray diagram doesn't agree with the math, then you say, hmm, something went wrong. I probably made a mistake. Let me go back and check. Okay, so let's go on to problem six. Same deal. We're going to look at the math first, make our predictions, then we'll do the ray diagram. So here we have a converging lens, SO less than F, right? It's within the focal length. And so the math should have worked out to SI being negative 3.00 centimeters, magnification of positive 2.00, 
Are you going to lose credit if you don't put the positive sign on? You won't, but it really does help as you line everything up with your sign conventions. So if you haven't already, pause the video, go ahead and make your predictions. And hopefully you predicted upright, magnified, and virtual, right? A negative image distance is upright and virtual. They always go together. Excuse me, it's uh, yeah, upright and virtual, right? And then magnification being larger than one means it's going to be magnified. Okay, so now we label object and F and 2F and 3F. And we go right ahead and start doing our ray diagram. Don't forget to put your dash line right down the center. Okay, more than likely you've drawn the parallel ray going through the focal point on the other side, the central ray going right through the center. Drawing the focal ray is a little problematic because if you start at the tip of the arrow and go this way through the focal point, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to miss the lens, right? So that's obviously not what's going to happen. Although if you're sort of paying attention, you may already have a sense of what to do. And if you already did it, that's fantastic. But it doesn't matter as long as we have two rays to interact with the optical device, in this case, refract, wherever they meet, they're going to form an image, but you can see they're clearly not meeting. They're clearly spreading out. There's nowhere they're ever going to meet over here. So what do we do? Well, remember, when it comes to light, humans are stupid. That's right. We're stupid. We're easily fooled. So imagine a person standing over here holding a lens and someone's on the other side that looking at that object through the lens and these rays of light are coming to them. And because humans are stupid, we naturally think that light comes to us in straight lines. We have no way of even perceiving anything else happening. And so the person over here thinks these light rays are coming from back here. So hopefully you recognize this is what we did with mirrors as well. We're going to trace the refracted rays backwards. Now be careful. You're tracing the refracted rays backwards, right? The ones that have gone through to the other side. So for this one, you trace it backwards into on the other onto the other side of the lens right notice we're using a dashed line again because it is imaginary light doesn't actually come from there we just think it comes from there and we are not putting arrows on them the actual rays always get arrows but these imaginary ones don't because they're not really showing where the light's coming from do the same thing with this one it really just needs to trace it backwards and certainly it will intersect over here somewhere and wherever they intersect that's where the image forms so from the principal axis up to that intersection point there's our image if everything works out perfectly, you should get yours to be right here on the focal point, as it turns out. Now, you can do the focal ray. In this case, as if you're paying attention, as we did before for mirrors, you pretend a light ray comes from F up through the tip of the arrow. So take a straight edge, connect from F up to the tip of the arrow, and head this way toward the lens. Okay? And when you do that, again, as always, you stop at the dashed line. We Remember, extend the dashed line above and below the lens in case you need it. In this case, we definitely need it because we just imagine the, the lens to be as tall as we need it to be. And, of course, this one's going to come out to the right, parallel to the principal axis. Don't forget to draw this refracted ray. Don't just draw the traced back rays. But when you do trace it back, it should intersect quite nicely with the other two. This one usually works very well as opposed to the mirrors. When we did a very similar thing, it didn't work quite as well. And now let's check our prediction. So we predict SI to be negative three centimeters, right? Uh, on the wrong side of the lens and the focal length is three centimeters and it's right there on the focal point. So that worked out quite nicely. We got a magnification of two and certainly this image looks about twice the size of the object. You can actually check if you wanted to. And what about our image descriptions? Is it upright? Sure, it's pointing the same way. Is it magnified? Absolutely. Is it virtual? Okay, well, Let's make sure we're very clear, right? Virtual is if you put a screen, could you get the image onto the screen? So let's imagine putting a screen right here. And imagine this is a source of light, like a light bulb or a candle. Will rays of light from this go onto the screen? Yes. Yes, they will. Will these rays of light go on the screen? No. But remember, there's actually infinite rays of light. So certainly some of the light rays, some will go this way and they would end up on the screen. But will they form an image? No. Why not? Because they haven't gone through the lens yet, right? If they head to the left and the screen's to the left, they haven't gone through the lens, and then why would you expect an image to be on the screen? We need to look at the rays of light that have actually gone through the lens. So if we're looking at these light rays that go through the lens that head to the right, is there anything that would make them head back onto the screen? Of course not. That doesn't make sense. And this is what we mean by getting an image onto the screen. Now, can you see this image? Yes, you can. If you are on this side and you hold this lens this close to the object, will you see an image? Yes, you will. And it will appear like this. It will appear upright and magnified. Of course, we could also say that we had to trace these light rays backwards. That's one more way of knowing that it is a virtual image. Let's go on to problem seven, our diverging lens. 
how do we know it's a diverging lens? Well, it says so, but also there's some other clues. It tells us we have a negative focal length. And remember, negative focal lengths are only for diverging devices. Also, we see the shape of the lens is concave. It's thinner in the middle than it is on the edges. Let's take a look at our math first. So ideally, you should have gotten SI is negative 2.14 centimeters, magnification of positive 0.285. And once, once again, if you haven't made your predictions, pause the video, go ahead and do so. We should be expecting upright, reduced, and virtual. Negative image distance means upright and virtual. Magnification less than one means reduced. All right, let's start to label up our ray diagram. Here's object. There's focal length, twice focal length, three times focal length. We're going to put our dashed line down the center, and you're going to start to do your rays with this diverging lens, which is not a converging lens, right? It is a diverging lens. Not a converging lens. Oh, no, no. This certainly will do the same thing as a converging lens. What would a converging lens do? It would take this parallel ray of light and it would certainly go through the focal point on the side, but that's not what a diverging lens does. That's what a converging lens does. So what's this one going to do? Well, pause the video if that's what you drew and please erase that. There's, there's no way this ray of light's going to go through F. That's what a converging lens would do. What does this one do? Well, we know it's going to diverge. Well, first of all, is this ray of light going to end up on the left side or the right side? Well, it's a lens, right? So it should go through to the right side, but it's certainly not going to go down through F. What's going to happen? It, it should diverge, right? It should be going up and to the right, but at what angle? Well, if you've been paying attention, you know that it's going to diverge as if it came from the focal point. The whole idea of the di diverging devices, whether they're mirrors or lenses, is that they kind of use the wrong focal point. Uh, opposite of the focal point used by the converging lens, the negative focal point, the virtual focal point. And so this ray of light diverges as if it came from F. So you trace backwards to F and go this way. This is our solid line. Light actually goes up and to the right, but it seems like it comes from F. Now, the center of the lens can still be modeled as a rectangle. So the central ray is done exactly the same way. Just goes right through doesn't change at all. And the focal rays can be a little bit challenging, but you know what? We don't even need it. As long as we have two rays of light to intersect, we can find our image. And these rays are not intersecting because, of course, it's a diverging lens. You shouldn't expect them to intersect. So what do we do? We trace them backwards. Now, this one, we actually have already traced backwards to F. This one would just trace back on itself. And so here is our intersection point. So let's go right ahead and draw the image from the principal axis up to that intersection point. Now, you can do the focal ray, and why don't you just go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure it out. It's quite similar to what we did for mirrors, but of course, you have to think about the light going through to the other side. So here's what you would do to draw the focal ray. We're again going to use the wrong focal point, right? For a converging lens, we'd use the focal point on the same side. For a diverging, we're going to use the focal point on the other side. So we would aim from the tip of the arrow through to the focal point on the other side. So arrange your straight edge to connect the tip of the arrow to the focal point on the other side, and then trace along, but stop at your dashed line. Because remember, at the dashed line, the light will refract. It will change direction. How will it refract? Parallel to the principal axis, and then... If you trace it backwards, look what happens, intersects the others. This one usually works out quite well. Let's check our predictions. We predicted upright? Sure. We predicted reduced? Definitely. Virtual? Well, think about this. If you put a screen here, you're actually preventing light from ever going through the lens, right? That The light would hit the screen, sure, but then it would never get to the lens, and so definitely you couldn't get an image onto it. But of course, also you trace the light rays backwards, so once again, we know it's going to be a virtual image. What about our numbers, right? The focal length here is negative 3, so this is 3. Does this look like it's about 2.14? Sure does. It sure does. This is why we always do the math first, then do the ray diagram. Now, if you take this object and move it closer or far away from the lens, because it's a diverging lens, the rays will always diverge, which means to locate the image, you always have to trace them backwards. If you have to trace them backwards, that means it's always going to form a virtual image. For a single device, virtual images are always upright, so it will always produce an upright image, and just because of the angles of these, it will always be smaller than the object, it will always be reduced. So it turns out, diverging lenses, just like diverging mirrors, only do one thing. They only ever produce upright, reduced virtual images.